Uh, my name is Tim Huang. My talk tonight is titled Social Hacking with Spatial Data. So talk in two parts. The first part I'm going to talk about an experiment we've been working on uh, with social influence. And the second part I'm going to talk about applying some of the insights of that experiment um, to real world situations like parties and conferences and whatnot. Uh, so first, the experiment. Uh, social board gaming is a concept we've been playing around with recently. It's pretty simple. Uh, what we do is we identify a target battlefield of users online. Um, this could be a group of friends, a group of acquaintances, indeed people not even connected to one another. Uh, and then teams, uh, the blue circles in this diagram, compete to make them behave socially in certain ways without them even knowing that a game is going on. Um, so Triangle is one of our first games, there's a couple variants, um, involves teams competing to try to draw connections uh, and are awarded points for creating connections interlocked between a particular social network. We also play a game of mimetic golf where people come up with content and are awarded points based on how much it spreads within a particular cluster. Now, uh, so this is, this is a project I've been working on uh, recently, and uh, the best part is actually it's not hypothetical, it's actually a real project with real living people that don't know that a game is going on. <laughs> so, this is actually 103 people on Twitter and the connections between them, obviously the names have been replaced to protect the innocent, uh, the teams in the game of how to know who they are. Um, and what we found is that teams are implementing a remarkably sophisticated range of tools to figure out what makes users tick and what they can push on in order to make communities behave in certain ways. So this is large-scale data mining, statistical analysis, uh, natural language processing, and the word probably come, um, comes to mind is terrifying. Um, but I'd like to take a moment in this talk to push back on that gut reaction, because if you think about it, uh, everyday experience is filled with social board games exactly analogous uh, to this very situation that I've just described. And indeed, if you bring up the idea of a conference, what is it other than businesses, speakers, and organizations trying to get a group of people to behave in a particular way? You just think that a new product is really cool to pass a piece of content around, or indeed even to connect uh, in certain ways. And so there's some really critical similarities here that are quite exciting, not least of which is the fact that it opens up the possibility that these statistical tools could be used in real world scenarios to get groups of people to behave in certain ways. And obviously, uh, you know, I would be remiss to mention that there's a number of differences. The main difference, of course, is that it's spatial. It happens in the real world. So that a lot of the influence happens on a face-to-face -face basis, not like in uh, social wargaming where we can contact everybody at once, for example. But if we could overcome that boundary, if we could overcome that barrier, um, it opens up a world of possibilities. So I'm going to spend the rest of the talk talking about an example about how we're trying to solve this problem uh, and make, it things, make things like this happen in the real world. And it's a kind of networking on steroids. So imagine, if you will, three months before a conference, we begin gathering all the information about every single attendee going to a conference and the connections between them made uh, online. Um, in the case of South by Southwest, we can pull down public information, quote, I'm going to South by Southwest. Or in the case of Barcamp, it's trivial because we can pull down all that information uh, from Wikipedia. Now on top of that, we lay information about who's influential in these networks and indeed how they're influential, what kinds of behavior they're able to generate in their audiences. So this is something that we generated with the top 10 kind of users on Twitter and whether or not people repeat their content or respond to their content. And on top of that, tippy top, we put another layer analyzing what people are interested in, what topics set them off and cause them to talk <coughs> the most. Uh, and once we've done all this information, gathered all this data, we've done the homework. And once you finally get to the conference, the spatial nature of this situation puts all the data into motion which means that different people are talking to different, in different places at different times. Which means that if we know who's in a room and we've done our homework, we can figure out not only who's the most influential in a room, but also what that room people will find most interesting. <laughs> obviously, given that we know someone is in a room is the difficult part, but obviously people reveal that information all the time, particularly at conferences. You may be twittering right now, for example, about the fact that you're right here listening to me in this particular situation. So if you take all this data and you imagine looking down on the conference, what you would see is a shifting landscape of not only influence, but the kinds of topics that are most likely to get picked up by the people in that room. And so one of the things that we've been imagining is that at some point a group of techies could feed that information through an earpiece to a high-tech networker who could literally surf this landscape, going to the places that are becoming more influential, picking up the micro-memes that are occurring them and sharing and talking about things that they already know people are going to be interested in. Now the problem here, obviously, is that this is uh, hypothetical for now. One of the things that we're planning to do is to go to a as yet unnamed technology conference in Boston in the coming few months and actually implement this in practice um, and trying to get a certain thing to get uh, spread. So uh, if something becomes quite popular, you may ask yourself whether or not that's emergent or the function of something from Social War Game. My name is Tim Huang. This is my obligatory contact information. Thank you very, very much.